Yo, what's going on guys? Sing here. Back at it again with the white vans. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just, uh, I was here with another video. Um, this time all about Siege. It's probably my most requested topic, um, is to talk about Siege. Um, you know, why T11 Siege? Uh, why are we always sieging in SVS? Like, why we always say, you know, Siege in Battlefield all the time? It's our number one attack style. Um, like, what's the deal with it? And, um, I guess the second thing people are curious about is, all right, so how do we do it? And when do we do it? How do we take the steps towards doing it? Um, you know, and people want to learn about it essentially. So I'm happy to help. Uh, so, um, I wanted to, you know, I have a list of topics to go through here and, um, I guess, uh, l let me just start with like who to pick, you know, I guess this is probably the first thing. This is probably the basic thing is like, what general should I kind of go for? And really, um, the, the general doesn't matter too much. Um, there's like four generals or five generals you could kind of pick through. Um, let's kind of, let's go through them right now. Uh, so the first, okay. So Napoleon classic, if, if you, if you have Napoleon and you started with him already, he's, he's a good choice. Um, great leadership based that, I mean, that's so leadership, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but leadership will give you um, hit points as a stat um, as you cultivate your general. Um, uh, it, your leadership will reflect how much HP your uh, troops will have, like their HP percent. And this 9.24 on the right side, this means like as you level up your general, the percent increase of HP goes up. So this is consider this like potential. Um, so as this general levels up, his HP will level up at, it, it'll have an increased, um, uh, scaling for HP relative to, you see this attack is 8.85. So it, it leans towards HP. Um, but yeah, no, HP is really good for siege. Um, so that's really great. Attack is pretty average 112. Um, and I think his total buffs I actually have it written down his total siege buffs end up being 72% attack and 10% defense. I don't think there or 10% HP. I don't think there's anything for defense, which is completely fine. And he has 10% uh, March size capacity. And the advantage with him is you get all his benefits without actually, um, really needing to have a dragon, uh, for your siege general. So he's a great choice. If you have him great. If you land him, great, good pick. Um, if you are going to get Nidhogg and you're going to have your Siege Dragon free up, um, Fafnir free up, then you may want to go for Grant. But So Matthias is the other option. And actually, I slept on this dude. He's not bad at all. He's got, um, he's not the worst, I should say, actually. But his base stats are pretty low. His leadership is low, I should say, at least. 107 leadership. Um, HP scaling is one, you know, 8.8. It's really average. Base stat for attack is pretty low, 117, and then 8.8 .8 scaling is pretty average. Um, and then his buffs end up totaling to 70% attack, 10% um, HP, uh, I'm sorry, 10% defense. Oh no, yeah, 10% HP and then 20% defense. Or no, 20% HP, yeah, 10% defense for a collective total of siege buff of 110. And then he gets 5% march increase, so... Not not bad. Um, I don't really like him the best, but he he. If you land him, he's all right. I did sleep on him a bit though. I thought he was completely trash. He's not. He's not completely trash. Um, my favorite is Grant. Um, I'm a little bit patriotic. That's also why. But uh, I do think he's a great C general, especially if you could free up and get that extra attack percentage um, for him. He's got the 120 base stat as attack and then 114 based stat and leadership again, but average scaling for both of them. And he ends up having 76%. Um, well, I'll just say the total 116 as his uh, siege buffs total between all of his skills over here and 6% March size increase as well with him. Um, but again, you do need Nidhogg and um, Fafnir to free up for your siege general. So I do like Grant, but again, he only is good if you, well, he gets max potential if you free up um, Fafnir. And the one that I would recommend as number one, if you can't get um, Fafnir freed up uh, for your siege general is Ramses. Um, 
His total buff, dude, his siege buffs with his skills is uh, 130%. Granted, a lot of it is towards defense, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, a lot of it's towards defense, which kind of sucks, but um, yeah, 130. And uh, you don't need a dragon or anything for him, so he's not bad at all. Like, if you get Ramses or Nappy, um, those two are great. Matthias, you can also settle with. He's good, too. And Grant is if you have Nidhogg. So those are the four that I'd recommend if you are hunting for a siege uh, general. Um, yeah, so those are those are the choices. Um, and just to take a step back as far as like, um, you know, obviously make sure your, your, your foundation generals are good first. You know, you're not going to use siege unless you have an alliance that's uh, ready to move on and do siege rallies. You're not going to be solo sieging people successfully. Siege is not meant to be a solo troop type. It's it's really meant to be used in rallies, at least in my experience. I mean, other other people may have experienced differently and they have different opinions about this, but um, my perspective is that siege is not meant to be a solo troop type, especially for the average player. Um, you're not. You're probably not going to have strong enough to see strong enough siege to be soloing people positively with uh um with your siege so um yeah that's just a side note so you you shouldn't be building them out really until until you're at that point your alliance is at that point but we'll talk more about that later um so okay so now that we have that settled you know you picked out your siege general let's talk about what gear you want to build on your siege gen so let's find my my boy all right so ari's axe definitely i'd recommend over the ack axe um and this is because um he has the range troop hp debuff which i think is more important than the attack debuff because um enemy range troops don't actually kill siege um your siege will die to siege and actually your siege will kill range troops like that's the other function of siege so if you've watched my other videos, if you've seen the reports that we've shared in the past, the first thing Siege will kill in a Siege Rally is Siege. And then once all the Siege are dead, the second thing Siege will kill is Range. So it makes sense to debuff Range HP, you know. So that's why I'd recommend doing the Ari's Axe. Don't cheap out and do the Ack Axe to try and save the, the tokens. The Ari's Axe is definitely the way to go in the long run. Um, the Ring is important too, and I think this is hidden behind bog wings and if that's the case you sh you should be pretty okay getting the other one as long as it's got the siege machine attack range you're good the reason i like this one is it's got the range defense debuff and again like i understand i think this is the one again that's hidden behind bog wings i'm not sure it's this or the boots i forgot um and if you can't get this one that's fine if it's hidden behind the bog wings then just you know don't worry about it um get the other one as long as it's got the siege attack range it's that's the important part really um, and then the helmet, I do the fear, uh, fearless Ari's helmet. It's got the siege attack percentage over there. And we do the, uh, fearless act leg armor, siege machine attack. Um, going to do the, and it's also got the siege attack debuff, which is kind of helpful in rallies for the chest play. We have the courageous act chest or yeah, courageous act armor. It's the siege machine attack, siege machine defense enemy siege debuff and the boots it's got siege hp so that's what i'd recommend as far as the actual gear itself is concerned um as far as the skill books i always go siege attack siege hp and siege machine range bonus as my three skill books um i would i never recommend anything else i think that's pretty standard at this point as the correct skill books if you don't have um if you don't have Fafnir, then use the Siege Beast. Um, let me see, where is this dude? I don't know, I forget which one the Siege Beast is, but uh, use the... Oh, there it is, Behemoth King. Use Behemoth King if you don't have uh, Fafnir ready to go. But uh, yeah, that's the correct Siege General for Siege is Fafnir. And I'll explain why, actually, so you guys can kind of see. Fafnir. Um, talent? No, where is it? Yeah, I mean, even his first thing says Siege Machine, Siege Machine. That's kind of cool, actually. I should probably level that up. Um, where do I see his skills, dude? Refine? No? Speed? No. Oh, there it is. What am I doing? Okay. Yeah, so Marching Siege Machine Attack. 
25 percent uh that's literally the only reason <laughs> but uh he, he's the only i think he's one of the only dragons that has siege buffs or he might be the only dragon that has siege buffs i believe so yeah so that's the reason fafnir ends up going on um going on the dragon over there this norway yeah yeah so that's that's yeah he gets a 25 percent siege attack from fafnir um to go on grant or whichever seed journal you end up getting if you had already started on the other one so so there's that um and yeah so just you know you wouldn't want to ruin your seed general first uh by the way so probably you want to do your wall general first and then uh range general um cab general is always important for bossing and everything and then i mean ground is important for reinforcing and then probably Siege, um, in my opinion, as far as Rune Sequence. And I'm just now getting to Siege, so um, yeah. So the next thing I want to talk about is Refining. As far as uh, Flats versus Percentage, people always ask, like, all right, do I accept Flats? Do I accept Percentages? Do I want to aim for one or the other? Um, I I wish I landed more Flats on my, on my my in my Refining journey um, on the General. Um, for two reasons, mainly because, uh, mainly because I am going for T11 um, as a general. Um, I do T11 rally. We do T11 rallies all the time. We don't really do big siege very often. That's one reason. Um, and flat refines affect lower tier troops um, much more than they affect higher tier troops. Um, percentages help higher tier troops more than they affect lower tier troops. So, I, th I mean, that's why I wish I landed more flats. It would affect our T11 rallies a little bit more, but it's okay. It is what it is. Um, and I would give you the same advice. So as you're refining, um, try to accept more flats if possible. Um, if we're doing my rule of like 20% or higher, or if you have your own rule, whatever you had set, uh, try to go for maybe 400 or higher, I'd say here, because I think the max is 513. Yeah, like 400 or higher is pretty good. Um for the attacks um and let me see yeah 400 or higher for the attacks at least um yeah and I'd, I'd always refine the attacks first as well those are probably the most important to have so attack uh, refine both the axe and the ring first and then you want to run hp that's actually really important to know is that you need to have your hp sorted out before your defense so your defense is actually really not that that important at all um and i'll explain a little bit more as to why as well in a second but refine your hp next and the same thing with this like try to accept a little bit over 400 if you can for the flats as well should be perfectly fine accepting flats on the hp um and then also go for 20 percent or higher as you're doing this as well in my opinion you know of course i mean everyone has their own bottom that they're willing to accept based on their budget for refining because again refining is literally just money um or just a lots of gamer sweat you know like just a lot of time that you're putting in for refining so um yeah attacks attack pieces first hp's next and then if you have the luxury to go back and continue refining gear go for the defenses and you can accept flats here too you can see it's very low 244 is the max flats you can get here and um yeah let me actually show you yeah workshop okay so look at the attack hp and defense base stats for siege troops it's I mean, pretty much like 11, 9, and then 4. So you can see attack has a decently high base stat. HP's got a decently high base stat. And then defense has a really low base stat. So that this is another reason why defense doesn't actually have that much of an impact when you refine it. Because if you're adding like 25% to, you know, whatever the actual base stat of this is, because this is after percentages, I believe, it, it's not as impactful as like adding it to the attack. Or adding it to the HP. It doesn't make that much of a difference um, because it's such a low stat, you know? Um, so, yeah, so that's the gear. Um, that's how I recommend refining it. Those are the pieces of gear that I recommend. Uh, just take a screenshot of this video, you know, that's probably the best way to, um, you know, create your list or however you want to do it or just write it down. And that's the sequence as far as how to refine and what to refine first. Um, and the next thing I'd recommend uh, sharing, actually, let me... Presets, that's what I wanted to talk about. So, 
the proper preset for a T11 siege rally is 1,000 of every single troop. Every single troop. And then just max out T11 siege. And that's literally it. And just have everyone in your alliance follow this preset. Anyone who's going to be joining that rally. And um, yeah, that's the T11 rally. And we always have two presets for Siege. So we have one for Small Siege, which is T11 Siege. And then we have one for Big Siege. Um, and I'll explain the reasons for each one in a second. Or when we would use each one. And this is the... This is Big Siege. So Big Siege is 400k T14 and... A little over 2 million T13. This is the Big Siege preset. So uh, we use Small Siege um, as our opening rally um, to because it's it's cheap and efficient. And then also the way the mechanics work, um, T11 right now is just very powerful for the power that you lose when you're using them, especially if they're buffed properly. And the rally is... Uh, you have a, enough people following the rally, enough quantity following the rally, enough of the correct generals following the rally, and you're attacking the right defense. Um, T11 just performs very well right now. To be quite honest, I, I think it's a little bit just broken. I really do think because it doesn't. It seems to not matter. Even like like it really doesn't matter too too much like who you're attacking. Like you just go positive as long as you're built correct offensively as an alliance, as like a team, as a unit. You just destroy people. Um, the only proper defense against the T11 rally is Big Siege, in my opinion, is Big Siege. You need multiple reinforcements of Big Siege. So if if people set a small siege rally on your alliance member and you need to save this woman or man, man or woman, whatever, just you need to send Big Siege to them. So this is why we always have a small siege preset and a Big Siege preset. So in case there's some miracle and God sends us an alliance that rallies back, um, we have this dusty big siege preset that will will pull out the cobwebs, you know, will 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 you know wipe away the rust or whatever, and we'll send a reinforcement of big siege in case someone ever decides to attack one of us. Um, but that's what big siege is, is primarily supposed to be used for, and then it is used on offense as well um, to clear out range troops. It can be used to clear out range troops. Um, we use it mainly when, uh, so after we use our T11 rally, we'll clear out a lot of the siege. And if there's, um, if there's a ton of rangers, range troops left in the keep, we use big siege to clear out the range troops. And, um, that normally goes pretty even, but a, a, a keep with a keep without siege and a keep without range is a defenseless keep. Like that's, uh, that's what people are buffing on defense, right? Range and siege. So if you're just, if you're pretty much majority cav and ground, and with no siege or range, like you're just a range dead, pretty much. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that's the preset. And um, okay, so like why T11 siege? So T11 siege is really for those larger keeps. Um, I'd say anyone really over like, depending on how big your alliance is, but anyone over like four bill or so, like four and a half bill. Um, that's built proper on defense that has, you know, the good cav HP and, and layers and everything. All right. Sorry about that. Um, just had someone walk in there. Um, but yeah, no. So T11 is, yeah, it's really for those larger keeps that you can't just like range cav or range cav ground. Um, that needs a little bit more, um, that needs some work up front to weaken for future rallies. So when you when you T11 siege, what you're doing is you're targeting enemy siege troops. And when, when a keep doesn't have their own siege to defend themselves and their only cav ground range, right? Imagine a keep cav ground range with no siege. Um, they're very susceptible to an archer attack. Um, and typically they're, I mean, depending on their size and depending on your size and your rally size, the quantity of people you have, your buffs, you know, there's a lot of factors. So it's very hard for me to give you just a straight up answer. You can just range one tap them afterwards. You can range cav them afterwards. Some people just cav afterwards. Um, we just siege range for the most part and they're dead. Depending on the size, we have to range siege range cav. If they're very, very big, we'll siege range cav ground or we'll siege range big siege cav. 
Um, and that actually takes me to my next point. So what's the deal with uh, small siege versus big siege? So, oh man, let me see if I can explain what happens uh, here. Do, 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 do. Okay. So this is a T11 rally in SVS. This is the one on Waggy Monster from um, from the last SVS that happened. Um, so we T11 him. This dude's huge. He's got a lot of troops. Um, all of us sent siege here. And the defender, you'll see, we did not touch his T14 siege. Um, actually, no, we touched a little bit of his T14 siege. So that means we must have killed all of his 12 and 13, let me see. They're 12 and 11. Okay, so the first thing T11 Siege will target is 12. The second thing it'll target is 11. The next thing it'll target is 14 along with layers. So it'll kill the 14 next. It started to work on it, but he has a lot of 14. So it would it was taking a lot of time to get through it, and we didn't have enough juice to get through all of his 14. Um, you'll notice that the 13 Siege was left untouched. And then it started to go down here. Yep, sorry, it killed his 10. It, and then it started to work on his 9. So that's what a T11 does. Um, and this is because of the range mechanics. T11 will target T11 and 12. Like they're in the same range bracket. Um, 14 and 13 are in the same range bracket. 12 and 11 are in the same range bracket. 10 and 9 are in the same range bracket. So when you when you siege them, as long as they have the same range books, like the range and the ring, siege range range, and the siege, siege, uh, siege range book and the siege uh, range ring, they will um they will attack each other so you see over here 2178 for 14 2178 for 13 and 1867 for 12 1867 for 11 1711 for 10 1711 for 9 so that's what happens when you uh t11 someone and when you big siege someone, um, you're going for the top tier right away. So your 14s and 13s will engage with their 14s and 13s right away. And if they have their 12s and 11s and all of them available to defend themselves, and this is the first thing that you have done, all their siege will eventually start firing against your big siege. And um, it's not going to go so well. But if, uh, if all they have is big siege left, uh, meaning... You know, they don't really have their siege layers left anymore. And let's just say they only have like 13s left over, which is a common report that you'll see. You'll see someone with only T13 siege left over and range troops. You'll take out you'll take out their siege and you'll start taking out their, their range troops. And in some cases, you'll literally take out all their range troops and they'll just be like cav and ground. Um, but that's one of the purposes for big siege. And the other purpose for big siege is to reinforce against any kind of siege rally that's coming at you. And... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so that's um that's why T11 siege and that's why siege in general. And like how do you do this? Like how do you get your team on board? How do you start your transition into this um into this siege capable team? Cuz you're not you really shouldn't be soloing siege or doing solo siege whatsoever. Well, like I mentioned before, you really need to make sure your basic generals are done first. You need a solid wall general first. Um if your defense isn't set up yet, if your alliance members' defenses aren't set up yet, um, there's no way in hell you guys should be thinking about Siege right now, in my opinion. Um, if you guys, meaning like you literally don't have the gear crafted or you don't have like solid refines yet or somewhat close to solid refines, you don't need to be thinking about Siege, in my opinion. Um, if, you're, if you don't have your range general geared, if you don't have your range general set up yet, prioritize that. If you don't have your cav general geared, prioritize that if you don't have your ground general geared prioritize that do those four generals first get the refines right especially range and especially ground especially defense make sure they're properly refined first in my opinion especially defense um have a solid defense first and have your teammates have a solid defense first before you start thinking about doing this um and when uh when you guys are all in a solid place like i'm, I'm guessing probably like a 15 to 20 bill alliance probably with a couple like maybe like 1.5 bill keeps or one bill keeps or folks that are like, you know, just tiering and have all those generals done and stuff and um, are able to kind of, you know, have maybe some extra gear. Maybe they're like three fourths done with debuff gear or something, halfway done with debuff gear and, and, and are able to um, 
spare some gear to start working on sea generals. You can start crafting the axe and the um the ring and then the helmet and the legs. Those are the most important pieces, I'd say. Let's go back to that just to double check. Yeah. Axe, ring, helmet, legs, and then the chest plate would be the number three. Um, but which you could do a little bit later if you have to. But yeah, and then refine those first. And uh, just slowly start getting your team to do this. You know, that's that's literally it. Just send alliance mills every day. I used to um, I used to send a mill every single day that just said siege is king. Um, every single day, every single day. This is before any of us like really had siege generals or ideas of doing siege. But every single day, I would send this mill, and I would give no context. I literally just say siege is king, and slowly we started building siege generals. And now all we do is siege. Um, well, that's a lot of what we do, but. Um, yeah, just make a plan with your team. Like, just do go crazy on Vikings. Um, get a lot more material and just keep going crazy on Vikings. Gather that material and just start letting your team know, like, hey, this is the plan. This is why we're going to be doing it. We're going to, you know, we need X, Y, and Z amount of people on board. I'd say, like, five or six people at least. Ideally, like, nine if that's possible. But five or six would be great um, to have that T11 rally set up. Um a siege bullet, I mean, 1.5 million T11 siege, but eventually you're going to need multiple, multiple, multiple siege bullets. Um, but yeah, 1.5 to at least send that one rally in a SVS or battlefield. And that would be very helpful as well. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's all I can really think of right now. Um, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy. A lot of this is super on the fly. Like, I don't really, I thought of this video like, you know, 30 minutes ago so. I don't really uh, plan too much for this stuff. I just kind of like, hey, this would be good for people to learn. So, and then I just do it. <laughs> so, uh, I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.